Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to try to do somewhat of a comprehensive review on the M855 round. This stuff that we're using today is straight up Lake City um, stuff. So the same exact stuff that the troops are using. It's annealed brass, 556 chambering. Uh, this was provided by Mars Arsenal. So thank you to them for actually sending a few boxes out for testing. Um, in terms of accuracy, we've been testing this in a bunch of different barrels on the channel over the last couple of months. Uh, you guys have seen that and we're pretty much getting anywhere from one and a half inch to three and a half inch groups, depending on, you know, me, uh, the barrel and the wind and whatever else the accuracy gods uh, take into account. So it's not match grade ammo by any means, but it's not designed to be either. Um, basically, the design behind this round is somewhat complicated, but uh, legend has it and seems to be true that the round was developed uh, in order to be able to penetrate uh, Soviet helmets at certain distances, uh, depending on what length barrel they were fired out of. Um, so to do that, they put a steel penetrating core inside of a full metal jacket. Uh, that will become very uh, important, I should say, here in a second, but it is not an armor penetrating round, at least it's not designed to be a lot of internet folklore out there and gun shop heroes will tell you that it is. It's not. That's not what it's designed for. It's not an AP round, but it does have uh, better penetrating capabilities than a lot of other rounds out there. So kind of take that into account when you're looking at everything. But right now we're going to take a look at a uh, chronograph test of it to see what kind of velocity we're getting out of a 16 inch one and eight twist barrel and that one and eight twist is, uh, i chose that for a reason it's facts and firearms uh socom profile mid-length for those of you wondering and um it's also after that we'll take a look at how it actually does in the gel block and then uh, come back here and discuss what we find You can see the entry wound there if you're looking at it from the top and right around the six inch mark the bullet starts to tumble at that point it takes a dive right here at the 14 inch mark it comes out of the gel block it looks like the bullet had actually broken or broke when it hit the table honestly i don't know which maybe the high speed footage will tell i don't know we'll have to look at it um but part of the bullet is right there at the 14 inch mark and we lost the rest of it so you saw there at a distance of 10 yards, which is what that chronograph was at there, we were getting a pretty decent uh, velocity as well as energy numbers. Uh, you can't complain about that aspect of the round at all. Um, it does well in that, and being a 5.56 chambering, you'd expect that. Um, you can see here in the chart how it would uh, change point of impact um, if you're using this combination at different distances. So uh, start with 5.56, certainly can't complain about the energy that's coming out of there at all. When you take a look, at actually what happened in the gel block, what we saw there was uh, relatively common in terms of not tumbling or fragmenting until six inches. And actually, um, what I'm gonna show you here in a little bit is some stuff taken from uh, Dr. Gary Roberts. He's a well-known ballistician. Um, and these charts come from him, so credit, full credit to him, but it illustrates the point that we're trying to make here with 855. Um, some things that have been noted in terms of uh, DOD testing of the round is that depending on the actual barrel used and uh, variables such as length and twist rate, you see wildly different results in terms of when the bullet starts to yaw, which causes the fragments. So uh, for those of you guys that are new to the ballistics and sort of how it works, if this was the bullet itself instead of the entire case, just work with me here, and it's going down range, it's sort of spinning like this with the centrifugal force put on it by the twist rate. So the rate that it's actually spinning at, as well as the yaw that's in the, bar that's in the round itself varies depending upon the actual twist rate and the barrel length. Uh, because the barrel length affects the actual twist imparted on the bullet, if that makes sense. So um, this round in particular has very different results uh, depending on those factors, twist rate and uh, barrel length. So that's why I chose the one and eight because it kind of is a good combination of what most of you guys probably have out there, the one and nine or one and seven and 16 inches is most common as well. So that's why we use that here. Um, but what, what DOD has found is that depending on those rates, and the distance that it's uh, the round impacts that the yaw rate can vary wildly. So like uh, six inches, which is what we saw today, tends to be sort of the best case scenario. So if you see here this chart of the human body standing erect, um, what you'll see here is that sometimes that's not the greatest thing in the world that you know you're not having any fragmenting or yawing or 
um, expansion, which this round doesn't expand, but compared to other rounds until that far in. And sometimes uh, it's been known to not yaw or fragment until at least eight inches in. So that can be, you know, sort of even worse. Uh, a lot of folks are familiar with what happened when we went into Mogadishu in the 90s. And a lot of, uh, there was a lot of reports, after, after action reports, uh, where folks were just getting shot multiple times, getting up and walking away. And this is one of the reasons why. Um, that those folks, obviously, generally Somalis tend to be relatively thin people, and uh, that sometimes that yaw rate it was it wasn't even yawing at all until after exiting the body. So the fragment thing that were that's going to cause a lot of tissue damage uh, here wasn't happening until after it had exited the body. So obviously that's not good for terminal ballistics. And you see here as well from this recovered piece from the gel block, the one that stayed in the block that we talked about earlier, um, you can see here this is the actual full model jacket surrounding the armor penetrating core. So the armor penetrating core exited here, and yet this piece was left behind. So you can see how it sort of breaks apart, and it kind of gives you an idea of what's gonna, what's actually happening there within that soft tissue um, as it fragments. So. Those are, I guess you could say, the factors that lead to the effectiveness of this round. So is it a bad round for home defense? No, it's absolutely not. Uh, the thing that makes me not recommend it, and I, you know, it's a controversial subject, I realize that, is that there's just better options out there. I've tested plenty of soft point of uh, OTM type bullets here on the channel in the gel. They all fragment earlier, they all expand earlier. Um, and you know, civilians out there are not restricted to what types of ammo they can use. My point is, it's not that this is bad, it's that there's better. So that's the point I'm trying to make here. So I know a lot of you guys like it because it's a military chambering, it's common, it's very uniform. Um, so those things it absolutely has going for it, but there are other options out there that I would recommend taking a look at if your life's on the line. That's about it. That's all I'm saying, guys. If you guys have any questions about this test, anything else we talk about here on the channel, you can always post below in the comment section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always, but thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Hopefully we all learned something here today and I hope to see you guys in the next video.